The message today is titled, Knowing Your, know your Enemies and Overcoming Sin. So in our, in our struggle to overcome sin, uh, we need to know who are the enemies. Because we know who the enemies are, we can be more aware of uh, the temptations uh, that these enemies give us. And, uh, and so we could, we could have the knowledge and then rely on God's Holy Spirit to help us to resist the temptations. And, and of course, when we, when we do sin, of course, we have Jesus Christ, our advocate, who we could go to in repentance. And we can uh, ask for forgiveness, and he is faithful to forgive us. The first, uh, the first enemy that we have is uh, when we get up in the morning and look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we see? Well, we see a body, and uh, we'll call that the flesh. And the flesh is all about get, 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 get. That's all, that's all it knows. And uh, it influences our human nature. And so that flesh is going to want to satisfy its lusts. And that is the first enemy that we need to recognize, our flesh, which influences our human nature and which influences us as we walk in this world. Um, if you turn to Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, very famous, very um, famous scripture. Uh, Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, or well known, I should say. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Let's, let's think about that for a minute. The heart is wicked. Desperately wicked. That means, uh, where, where do our emotions come from? The heart. So when we're emotional, when we're making a decision based on emotions, we have to realize that we have to think twice about it and we have to analyze it because without God's spirit, the heart is deceitful. And it's wicked. It's wicked. Yes, sir. And so it's deceitful and wicked because of, our, of man's human nature, which has been corrupted. Of course, when we have God's spirit, we know that God will transform our hearts and minds through his spirit, and we will have a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. Yes. But uh, we need, that's one truth we need to know. Uh, now, of course, though we are, if we're converted and we have God's Holy Spirit, uh, we still have to be aware of uh, there's still a struggle with the flesh. You're not out of the woods when you have the Holy Spirit. That's right. Because uh, as we're going to see, um, the spirit struggles with the flesh. Yes. We turn to Matthew uh, 26 and verse 41. Matthew 26 and verse 41. And uh, when uh, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and uh, he told his disciples, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And they ended up falling asleep, just to show that the flesh went out uh, that, at that time. And uh, so this is a very important principle also. The spirit is willing. The spirit affects our minds, and we want to do, like what we read about Paul, we want, we want to do what's right, but the flesh is pulling us in another direction. And many times we want the easy way out, as George Roper mentioned. We take the easy way out, and we take the way of the flesh rather than walking in the spirit, which, would, which would, could be more difficult in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in reaching our goal. Mm -hmm. So the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Very important principle. Uh, Romans 7 and verse 14. Romans 7. Romans 7 and verse 14. Paul said, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, 
what God is telling me to do, the Spirit's telling me to do, that I do not practice. This is Paul now. For what I hate, that I do. So even when we have the Spirit of God, ah. we're going to have these struggles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we have to really f be strong in the Lord and, uh, and to fight off these uh, urges that we will have uh, to do, to take the easy way, as George Bumper uh, would say, and to take the easy way and possibly sin. Mm -hmm. um, if then I do what I I do what I will not to do, I agree with the Lord that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So you realize it is this flesh, just the, the sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not do. Fine. For the good that I will do, I do not do. But the evil I will not do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. But we can't blame sin, right? <laughs> <laughs> can't blame sin. No, I have to take responsibility. I find that a law, that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. It's a war, it's a struggle. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with the, with the mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. You know, so we, we need to realize this. So, you know, when we do sin, you know, we analyze, well, why, you know? And, uh, and, and we realize that this is a struggle between the flesh and, and the spirit. But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean we can use that as an excuse all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we have to grow in knowledge and, and grace. And it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. We have to get the Holy Spirit to be in our minds our hearts and minds, so that if our mind, if our heart is right, our mind will be right, and we'll make the right decisions. Um, Galatians 5 and verse 16, please. Galatians 5, as we're looking at our enemy, the flesh. Galatians 5 and verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. See, all these scriptures I'm giving you are saying the same thing, right? The flesh lusts against the, the Spirit. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Just as we were reading what Paul uh, mm -hmm. was saying. Yeah. But if you are led by the Spirit... And that's the key. You are not under the law in terms of the penalty of the law and, and sin. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are, it's a long list, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. Notice uh, there's a lot of uh, sexual sins here. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. oh, will sir. not. Mm -hmm. Will not. Drunks, drunkenness, uh, things we can relate to probably. Uh, I mean, you know, in, in our lifetime, uh, maybe... Uh, experienced that once or twice. Um, also, lying is another one. Uh, a, a liar is not going to enter the kingdom of God. We're talking about compulsive liars. So we're talking here about, that's basically the fruit of the flesh. But the fruit of the Spirit, and this is what we have to uh, learn to walk in and to grow and mature to walk in the Spirit. And you know, if you're converted, you have the Spirit of God. You, you, if you were baptized, if you repented, 
and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you were baptized, you had hands laid on you, you have the Holy Spirit. And uh, maybe it doesn't feel like it, but you do. You do. And you must believe that. you got to look at faith. And, and you and you can um, generate the, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. That's the most important one. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. Joy. The, the joy of knowing salvation, of, of, of understanding uh, that we are children of God and we're going to live forever in the kingdom of God. Peace. No matter what we're going through, the peace of God can give you that calmness, that, 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 that ease of mind to get you through anything. Uh, Long-suffering, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That comes, that's a fruit of the Spirit also. Gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So we see the works of the flesh, we see the works of the Spirit. And so we have to focus on the works of the Spirit. Amen. If we go uh, to Romans 8, uh, at verse 1, and see what, what is learn more about living in the Spirit, Romans 8, Romans 8, and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. When we're in Christ, Christ Jesus, we're walking the walk. We're walking in the Spirit. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Christ died for us. He sacrificed for us, which basically forgave us of our sins of the past. And we have Jesus Christ as an advocate as we, as we, as we do miss the mark in our, as we're uh, striving in our Christian walk. We have Jesus Christ, our advocate, who we could go to mm -hmm. in repentance. And yeah. he's, 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 he will forgive us our sins. But it also said we have to forgive others that, that sin against us. So if we're not forgiving, he's not going to forgive us. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's another... Uh, rule here uh, that we should know. For the, for the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ okay, verse 3. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Get, 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 lust. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Give, 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 serve. Mm -hmm. Mr. Armstrong, you know, Worldwide Church of God, used to always use that analogy. That give and get and get, give and get, to illustrate these points. So when you're walking in the Spirit, you're, you, you give. When you're walking in the flesh, you, you want to take, you want to get. For to be carnally minded is death. It's death because if, we're gonna, if we stay carnally minded, we're going to end up in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. and, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Yes, be, sir. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's hatred against God. Yes. It's not compatible with God. The carnal yeah. mind. Very strong words. It's enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. And God gave us the example of the Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they had carnal minds. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. And we saw that they did not, they did not subject themselves to the law of God. Verse 8, so then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So we, we need to take this seriously. We need to believe that we have the Spirit of God in us. Sure. And, uh, and then to, uh, to walk in that Spirit by getting closer to God in prayer and in, uh, and, and, un and understanding His Word and starting to uh, exhibit the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And that will be a, a change in your mind. Your mind will start to be transformed. Verse 10. 
And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, and, and that's uh, God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So we'll be in that resurrection, that first resurrection. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So we could do that. Mm -hmm. By the spirit, we could put to death the deeds of the body. Get, get, can triumph. I mean, give, can triumph over again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. First uh, Peter uh, four and verse one, please. First Peter four and verse one. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. You know, we're, we're bought with a price. Uh, Jesus Christ sacrificed. When we accept that sacrifice, you know, we're bought with a price. When we're justified and reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. Right? Just think about before you were converted, uh, what you were like. <laughs> and hopefully you see a uh, difference now. When we walked in lewdness and lusts and in drunkenness and revelries and drinking parties and abominable idolatries, in regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dis dissipation, speaking evil of you. You know, we need to choose our friends carefully. But when you're converted, you don't have to worry too much about that because your old friends are going to leave you uh, yes. in a flash. <laughs> when you don't, uh, we're not, you're not doing the same things that they, they like to do. They will give an, an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Well, what does this mean? Well... The gospel is being preached to and was preached to the dead, the walking dead. Mm -hmm. And we were part of the walking dead. Yeah. We were walking, following this world, not having any real purpose in life except to get, 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 and, and to, uh, uh, to lust. And uh, we were just with the, everybody else, and we were the walking dead because that if we don't have Christ, we're, we're, we're doomed. We're doomed. And... Uh, Thank God we're not uh, of the walking dead anymore. We, and of course, uh, God wants all to repent and to, come, uh, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And mm -hmm. thank God for the great white throne judgment where, where people will have a chance to uh, repent and to know Christ. And Romans 6 and verse... Romans... Uh, Six of our six. Knowing this, that the old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So before we knew Christ, we were slaves to sin. Sin was nice. Sin was good. Sin was pleasurable. Sin was uh, wasn't sin. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't us. Uh, but when we were baptized, that old man, that old woman, no offense, old woman, I hope you <laughs> Old man, an old woman, went into the water and came out a new man, a new woman. Yes. And even though, as I said before, you didn't, maybe you didn't feel any difference. <laughs> uh, hopefully, as time, as time went on, you, you did see a change, and you see a big change from the way you were. Amen. So we're no longer slaves of sin. For he who has died has, freed, has been freed from sin. So you, so you symbolically died when you were baptized. And you came out a, and you were freed from sin. And you came out and you had Jesus Christ living in you through the Holy Spirit. So the first enemy is our flesh. Second enemy 
that we need to be aware of is the world. The world. Go to 1 John 2, verse 15. 1 John 2. Oh, people love this world. People, love, people are uh, talking about uh, uh, the end game. Uh, not the Avengers. Yeah, the Avengers. Avengers end game. Yeah, that's that's. You know, everybody's talking about that. You know, they're not talking about God. They're talking about Avengers uh, end game. I have nothing against that, you know, against the Avengers Endgame, but I'm just saying, this is what the world is focusing on now, or uh, yes, the Game of Thrones, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 1 John 2, verse 15. 1 John 2, verse 15. Do not love the world. Do you love the world? or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. These are very strong words. Yes, sir. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So, don't love the world because the world's going to pass away. And you're going to pass away with the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. this, this world is temporary. Yes. It's very temporary. Yes. You know, we're here for, for, for a moment. <laughs> yes. And, um, but the kingdom of God is the reality. Amen. That's what we have to focus on. Amen. And uh, that, uh, that's going to abide, for, abide forever. Mm -hmm. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Sure. The world did not know Him, and they, 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 they killed Him. They, they, they crucified Him. And uh, the, world, the world doesn't know us. When we have Christ in us, we are, we are alien to this world. And the world... The world uh, is not going to accept us. And verse 13, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. I say, well, the world, the world doesn't hate me. Nobody hates me. You say, well, stop talking about Jesus Christ. <laughs> and you'll see how fast uh, the world's going to hate you, how, how uh, you're going to have uh, uh, trials and tribulations and uh, on your job and with your family. and uh, um, Because... You know, the world is empty against God. It's hatred of God. Um, although, you know, it's funny. It's not funny, but, you know, but every, every human being has that sort of longing and knowing that there is some higher power, but they, that, that there is a God. They have a longing for God, but they suppress it. Because we were created by God, and we are God's uh, creation. So every, every, every human being in the creation uh, has a uh, desire, but they to to know God, but they suppress it. And this world is uh, the enemy uh, that helps them to suppress it. Uh, James four and verse four. James four and verse four. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Again, hatred with God. For God. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Yes, sir. Wow. We don't want to be an enemy of God. Uh, Matthew 13 and verse 22. Matthew 13. Verse 22. Now this is the parable of the sower, and uh, the, the, uh, the seed is the word of God. 
Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. So we see here that we know that God is, is calling, many are called by God. But the reason that uh, few respond and are chosen is that basically the cares of this world will choke the word. And so when, uh, when someone hears the word or is uh, introduced to the word, they want to know more and maybe they start to read, but the cares of this world kill the word in them. And, uh, and so they don't have root and they don't grow and uh, they, uh, they don't follow up. They don't follow up. Rich and riches, of course. Riches choke the word. So when we love the world, we, we're gonna pursue, we want to pursue wealth and riches and uh, material things and uh, lusts uh, of the body. And uh, those are the things that uh, are going to choke the word. Uh, and uh, th this is, uh, and we need to understand that. And then also verse 21, it says when, uh, when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately <coughs> it stumbles. So that's, again, when peer pressure or pressure from the world or from your family, when you start to, uh, when the seed starts to, you, you start to uh, be introduced to the Word of God, but then because of trials, maybe you know, lose your job because they won't give you off on the Sabbath, uh, or your family is persecuting you, um, you, uh, you, you, you relent, you relent. We go to uh, John 15 and verse 18, please. John 15. John 15. Verse 18. If the, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me first, Christ says, before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. <coughs> they, if they hated Christ, they're going to hate us because we represent Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. John 17 and verse 14. Yes. Christ says, I have given them your word, as he's praying to the Father, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Mm -hmm. So we live in the world, but we're not of the world. I'll explain in a minute. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your Amen. word is true. Amen. The yes, word sir. of God. Yes. yes. That's what John was waiting for. That's good. <laughs> As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. But notice verse 20. He's talking to his apostles. He's praying for his apostles then. But notice verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Yes. That's all of us here. Yes. He's, that prayer applies to all of us here. Amen. Uh, pray Amen. for us uh, who believe in me through their word, which is incorporated in, in the Word of God in the Bible. Um, Romans uh, 12, verse 2. Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And again, it's all about the mind. And we have to renew our mind. We have to transform our mind. And we can only do that through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not follow what the world is doing. 
What the world is doing leads to death. Um, do, do not conform to what the world is doing or the thinking of the world. The thinking of the world. But uh, we have to renew our mind that we can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will, will of God. Amen. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 18. Second Corinthians 5 verse 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Yes. Now we, we, are, uh, we have to live in this world, but we're not of this world. We represent the kingdom of God, and, and we have a ministry of reconciliation. We all have a ministry. Yes, sir. It, it's not just the pastors, it's not just the elders, it's not just the, the deacons, it's not just the uh, ordained men and men. Uh, and, and women, deaconesses, but it's, uh, we all have a, a, a ministry. It's the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, yes. not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sent for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So we have God's righteousness in us, but we are ambassadors for Christ. We're, see, we're not, of this, we, we're not of the world. We, the world hates us, but we have to be in the world. But we represent the kingdom of God. Yes, and our mission is to reconcile others to Christ. That is our mission. Our mission is out there to reconcile other people to Christ by uh, telling people about the truth of God. Now that doesn't mean we go out and stand on a soapbox in Times Square <laughs> and start preaching, but people are going to see us by our, our light. In this dark world, we're a light. I'm going to read that in a minute. Yes. Yep. And they're going to see your behavior at work, wherever you go. And people are going to come up to you and ask you about your faith. They're going to ask you. And that's the time when you have the chance to give an answer to, to the reason that you, to, for what you believe in. Yep. And that, that is a chance to uh, preach Christ and to... Uh, of course, uh, if God isn't calling that, that person, that person's not going to respond. But you never know. You might be planting a seed. And anyway, they asked you, right? So yeah. you're just telling them. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, that's, that's, that's the, the main way that uh, we're going to preach the gospel is really through, through our lives, yes. through our behavior. And, uh, and then when people want to know, uh, we tell them. We tell them. Ministry of Reconciliation, Matthew 5 and verse 14. Because we are lights, we are lights in this dark world. Matthew 5 and verse 14. You are the light of the world, Christ says. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. So, so we have to be lights, and you can't be a closet Christian. Right. <laughs> you can't put your light in the closet, and, you know, and uh, okay. nobody's ever going to see it. You know, you don't go to church, you don't uh, talk about your faith, you don't, you know. You can't be a closet Christian. Oh, I keep the Sabbath, I keep the Holy Days. But uh, there's more to it than that. Um, so our light has to shine. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. 12, 12. 
For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks. Oops. Sorry. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. Get a little tired. I like goof up. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. 2 12. 2 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Amen. Sure. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Holy Spirit teaches us again. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. that's how our mind is going to be transformed in our heart. Amen. It teaches us uh, by giving us understanding of God's Word uh, as we study His Word, uh, as we pray to God and develop a relationship. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, yes. nor can he know them, because they are spiritually d discerned. Yes, sir. So we have to understand that. Yes. We have to understand that, that people in this world that don't have the Spirit of God, uh, they don't understand the things of God. It's all oh. foolishness to them. You oh. know, so try talking to them about Jesus Christ. It's mm -hmm. foolishness, you know. They think you're a fool. They think... Uh, wow. Just the, goes in one ear, out the other ear. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we were we were like that, too, at one time. Maybe some of us. I know I was, you know. I felt embarrassed, you know, talking about... I didn't know, I, I didn't know much about Christ anyway, but just a word, the name, you know. So I like, go... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1 John 5 and verse 4. First John 5 and verse 4. Right. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen. Our faith. Yes. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. Now it's all about our faith. Now, that is the key. It's our faith that's going to get us the crown of salvation as we run the race and when we fall down we pick ourselves up again we continue on the, the narrow path to salvation yes. and uh, we don't let any, anybody uh, thwart our our uh, what we uh, are going for um, because uh, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. We have to, we have to believe that God exists. We have to, we, uh, we have to uh, love God. Uh, we have to uh, develop the mind of Christ and the character of Jesus Christ. And uh, we have to walk in the Spirit and basically uh, display the fruits, the fruit of the Spirit. And John 16 and verse 33, Here's the good news about our enemy, the world. Uh, John 16, verse 33. John 16, 33. Uh, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Amen. We don't have to worry about the world. Because Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And if we're in Christ, uh, we don't have to worry either. We don't have to worry at all. Uh, but we have to understand how the world can, can corrupt us and that the world is our enemy. And we need to, again, develop the mind of Christ. The last enemy that we need to understand is of course Satan. <laughs> That's all interwined, isn't it? Saint, Satan is in uh, influences our flesh and human nature. Satan is in the world, influencing the world and corrupting the world. And so now we come to Satan 
And, uh, you know, the world looks at Satan now like a cartoon figure or, or uh, like the Easter Bunny, you know, some, or some <laughs> mythological uh, character. Uh, they don't believe uh, that uh, there's such a thing as Satan. If you go to yes. John 14, John 14 and verse 30. Let's face it, we, you know, we don't spend that, a lot of time thinking about Satan, <laughs> but uh, we, should, we should spend some more time uh, understanding uh, Satan and his influence. John 14 and verse 30, Christ says, I will no longer talk with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. This is when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus calls him the ruler of this world. The ruler of this world. Well, oh, how, how did that happen? Well, Adam and Eve. Adam and yes, Eve sure. sinned. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And uh, God allowed uh, Satan to uh, be the ruler of this world. Uh, and, uh, and we have to resist Satan. And we can resist Satan. Second uh, Corinthians 4, verse 3. Second Corinthians 4, verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Yes. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Yes, sir. Who's the God of this age? Satan. Who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So, Satan is the God of this age, and he, he, blind, he, he blinds people to the truth. Yes. Who has blinded. Less, less uh, that people could, would uh, believe and come to understand the, the, the gospel and, and come to the light of Christ. He's blinding them so they can't see the light. <laughs> they can't see the light. And uh, now he does that as we saw in the parable of the sower again, you know, when the people hear the word and they want to know more, you know, trials, tribulations, the lust for riches, the love of this world. Kills, kills the word. Uh, Matthew 4, verse 8. This is where the devil is tempting Christ, the wilderness. It says in verse 8, The devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to the, him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Well, here's, a, here's a, another example of how we see that Satan was the rule of this world because he said to Christ, I will give you all these things if you will worship me. Mm -hmm. All the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Amen. Then the devil sure. left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Amen. So we, we could fight Satan with the word of God. Yes, yes. sir. Mm -hmm. Get back, get back. Yeah, get back. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible is a two-edged sword, yes. spiritually. Yeah. spiritually. Yes. So we can rebuke Satan. And so, you know, that sin's coming over you, or you're being influenced, you know, it's okay to say uh, I rebuke you, Satan. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have that influence over me, um, because he is the tempter. He is the tempter. So we have to understand that. Now he doesn't come up to your face and tempt you or talk in your ear, but he tempts you through your flesh, your human nature. Other people uses other people, particularly family members at times. Uh, he could use family, he use anybody um, to, uh, because it's just, this world has been corrupted by Satan. So it's his world. He's the ruler of this world. So that's why the world is our enemy. Yeah. And it's an well, enemy towards God. Yes. Uh, it's hatred towards God. And uh, because we live in this world, uh, our human nature has been corrupted. Um, and our flesh is... Uh, basically influenced by the world. 
go to John 8 and verse 44. We need to understand this about Satan. Uh, John 8 and verse 44. John 8, 44. Jesus says, he's talking to the, uh, the Jews, and he says to them, you are of your father the devil, mm -hmm. and the desires of your father you want to do. Yeah. You know, either your father is Jesus Christ, or your, fa your father is the devil. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. If you're yes. not in Christ, then your father is the devil. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he was a murderer from the beginning. And maybe yes, that, sir. Maybe that yes, refers to his influencing uh, Cain to kill Abel. That's right. And uh, he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Nope. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Yes, sir. So we have to realize that, that Christ, uh, that uh, the devil is a liar, the father of lies. The father of lies. And you know, uh, Satan is not going to appear, we know, as uh, in, with horns and a tail and a pitchfork. If he, if he were to, if he were to uh, appear as a person, and he probably could, uh, just like the angels can appear as, as men. And he's, he's, he, he's an angel. He was an angel. Uh, uh, he, would, he, would, he would come as someone as well-dressed, well-mannered, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. friendly, uh, charisma, mm -hmm. someone you want to go have a beer with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yes. Seriously. Oh. Uh, Ephesians 2 and verse 1. Ephesians 2 and verse 1. Ephesians 2 and verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, mm -hmm. the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So we were once sons and daughters of disobedience. Mm -hmm. uh, we all walked according to the course of this world before we were converted, before we repented. We were all, we were all uh, the walking dead. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, children of wrath, uh, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we have to be aware of the enemy, the devil, and how can we resist them? Well, let's go to 1 Peter 5 and verse uh, 8. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. Be sober. Now, sober doesn't mean uh, not to be under the influence of alcohol, but it means to be aware, have your eyes wide open. Yes, sir. And uh, to be walking in this world, uh, be vigilant, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So we have to be vigilant, we have to be sober, and uh, we have to be able to, God, we have to ask for God's wisdom, and we have to walk in this world with our eyes wide open and be able to discern between right and wrong and yes, between sir. good and evil. Between right and wrong and between good and evil. And we have to put on the armor of God. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And verse 10. You know, you shouldn't leave your house in the morning without praying to God for His protection because you're entering an evil world, which yes. is your enemy. Yes. And even when you're in your house, when you turn on the TV or you go on the computer, 
you know, oh. this evil world's yeah. mm -hmm. thinking is is influencing you. Or in your car, and you have the radio on, you know. Uh, so he's the prince of the power of the air, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's transmitting all these wrong ideas that people have come to accept. You know, yeah. abortion, mm -hmm. same-sex mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality is a right, civil right. Yep. They're born that way. <laughs> <laughs> All kind of evolu uh, evolution, you know, teaching our kids about evolution in the schools, and denying God as the creator. Uh, all these things are influencing us and influencing our children and our families. Yes, sir. And we have to put on the armor of God, verse 10. Uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, I don't fully understand this, but what it's saying is, is that there's spiritual wickedness that is basically influencing this world. Yes. So Satan must have a lot of help and yes. uh, spiritual yes. beings too. He's not talking about human beings, um, and so uh, you know we need to be wake, wake up and, uh, and uh, not be fearful, but uh, to be sober. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may, may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Have we put on the breastplate of righteousness? So we have to, as part of our armor, we have to have the, uh, the belt of truth. The belt of truth. And what is truth? The truth is the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And we have to walk in the truth. We have to put on the breastplate of righteousness, and that's God's righteousness. We have to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we're peacemakers. When we go out into the world, we're not there to cause strife. We're not there to offend people. And uh, when people push our button, we have to be able to control ourselves, and we have, need to be able to answer uh, in a in a manner that is not offensive. Uh, a uh, soft answer turns away wrath. Above all, take the uh, the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So we have to walk in faith. That's the key. And that's like a shield that protects us. We walk in faith. And uh, no matter what people are telling us, no matter what uh, the world is saying, um, and take the helmet of salvation. And again, the helmet is protecting our head and our mind is key here. That's where salvation, uh, that's, that's what's going to lead us to salvation, is our mind. And uh, so, so, uh, so we take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Just as we saw uh, Jesus rebuke Satan using the Word of God, that is, sure. a, that is a, 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 a weapon. <laughs> Praying also with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this, to this end, with all pers perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we have to persevere. So we see we have... We have uh, Three enemies, three enemies that we have to recognize and, and strive against in overcoming sin. One is our human nature, or we could say the flesh, which influences our human nature. The second is the world, which is enmity against God, and the world hates you. Remember that. <laughs> yes. And uh, and Satan, the devil, who is the uh, who is the mastermind, who is the one that is uh, has corrupted this world. Uh, for thousands of years. Now you might say, um, oh, this is too hard. This is too hard. I can't do this. I'll take my chances with Satan, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to resist. <laughs> well, what are, the, what are the rewards of overcoming? The rewards of overcoming. Maybe this will motivate you. You might say, oh, this is too hard. Uh, I'll wake up in the, white, in the great white throne judgment and then I'll... Uh, I'll take the easy way out. <laughs> take the easy way out. I'll wake up in the great white throne judgment. I'm not going to fight Satan. I'm not going to fight sin. You know, it's, it's too hard. You know, I'll just wake up and then, then I'll accept everything. You know, 
I think everybody threw them just What other rewards? Well, Revelation 2 and verse 7 as we close here. Revelation oh, yes. uh, 2 and verse 7. What other rewards of overcoming that might motivate us? Um, Revelation 2 verse 7 is uh, the angel speaking to the church in Ephesus and Christ says, He who has an ear, or the angel says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the, of Christ says, what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. So we could be, eat from the tree of life and we could be live forever in the kingdom of God. Now, verse 11, uh, talking to the church of Smyrna, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who will come shall not be hurt by the second death. We can look forward to eternal life in the kingdom of God if we overcome. Verse 17, talking to Pergamos, the church of Pergamos. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Verse 26, speaking to Tyra, 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 to him, I will give power over the nations. Yes, sir. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be, they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. Well, here he's referring to when, uh, we, we, when we're fighting the beast power, when we're resurrected and we go up in the clouds with Christ, and then we're, we head to the Mount of Olives. And I think Christ is going to do all the work, but <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there as uh, they destroy the, uh, he destroys the beast power. But we're also we're going to be teachers in the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. We're going to be kings and priests, we're going to be rulers, uh, but we're going to be priests and uh, also priests and teachers. And we're going to be teaching uh, the nations uh, the word of God in the millennium. Uh, and I will give him the morning star. Yes. I will give him the morning star. And uh, we go to uh, Revelation 3 and verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Amen. Wow, Amen. wow. Mm -hmm. Christ is going to oh. say your name mm -hmm. to the Father. Wow. And awesome. uh, we want to, we want to, our names are written in the book of life now. Yes. You know? And we don't want it erased, you know, or blotted out. Um, verse 12. The church of Philadelphia. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall not go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem. And you can read more about that in uh, Revelation 22, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Amen. We're going to be we're going to be special. We're going to be loved. We're going to be uh, with God. Um, in verse 21. Church of the Laodiceans, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I overcame. Wow, we're going to sit with Christ awesome. on his throne. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. As I also overcame and sat down with my Father on his yes. throne. He who has an ear, let him hear. Yes.